my name is Jovan Kurbali. I am director of Diplo Foundation, and uh, I would like to welcome you to our uh, webinar, which will follow the uh, calendars on the evolution of technology and diplomacy. The, the first webinar will focus on uh, our uh, January illustration of the, of the calendar. And it is important that uh, you let us know if you have the printed copy of the calendar. Here is the, here is the ca calendar for 2013. And, and as you can see, the first uh, month, January, is dedicated to prehistory. This is what we are going to discuss uh, today during the first webinar after we introduce the topic and the way how we're going to, to address it. Therefore, please, if you, if you don't have the calendar, uh, let us know by writing an email to diplo at sign diplomacy.edu. Once more, diplo, D-I-P-L-O, at sign diplomacy.edu. Well, we will start uh, today's session with one uh, small uh, experiment. Um, um, uh, Arvin, could you could you prepare the video? We're waiting for our colleague Arvin. Just uh, to explain where we are physically, I am based in Geneva, in Rue de Lausanne, which is the uh, uh, street which goes from the railway station in Geneva, if you're familiar to the United Nations. Arvin is based in our office uh, in Belgrade, and this is uh, some sort of physical structure of Diplo, although we are quite a virtual organization, having our staff all over the world in uh, more, like, more than 20 locations from Fiji to Venezuela. An animated head. Animated head. So that's what you see on the upper left. Animated head. And you can see what's watching at the computer screen on which we play these animations. And so yarn contagion that you're probably all familiar with and maybe you're going to start yarning soon now, uh, is, is something that we share with other animals. And that's related to that whole body channel of synchronization that underlies empathy. And that is universal in the mammals, basically. Now, we also study more complex expressions. This is consolation. This is a male chimpanzee who has lost the fight. And he's screaming, and a juvenile comes over and puts an arm around him and calms him down. That's consolation. is very similar to human consolation. I realize that I've been speaking for quite some time with, uh, without you hearing me. Well, uh, it was a uh, short, uh, short experiment. I, uh, I yawned after the presentation, as all, all of us did, as, as you can see, chimpanzees did in the, this experiment. And this is the first uh, message that we'll try to introduce. Uh, this is some, some sort of anchoring into our discussion, not only in history, but in uh, some sort of uh, biologically relevant reactions, human reactions to the to the normal situations like yawning. I hope that that it will be the all uh, of, uh, all yawning for today's presentation, and you won't repeat it during the the exercise. And it is a great advantage to have online classroom because there couldn't be uh, yawning contagious uh, in the classroom itself. You, I cannot see you, and uh, you cannot see each other. Now, uh, I'm just hearing that still we have a video playing in background. Aha, uh -huh, that's the, that's sort of, okay. Uh, are you, are you hearing still the video with the, with the chimpanzee experiment or is, is it uh, finished? Not anymore, finished, I think. Not, not anymore, great. Thank you. Good. Uh, we will go to the next uh, slide, Arvin, please. I can see, uh, it seems that Arvin is sleeping now, not only yawning. 
could you have the next slide, Arvind? Yeah. Okay. Probably there is uh, some problem with uh, with connection to to Belgrade. Essentially, what we plan to do throughout this exercise. Uh, uh, through the webinars itself, but also through discussion that we'll have around the advanced webinars, is to uh, try to anchor our discussion on the current uh, dilemmas of diplomacy, not only e diplomacy, but diplomacy in general, into the historical perspective. And you probably noticed the tweet uh, of the whole series of webinars or summary what we want to achieve is a famous quote from Winston Ch Churchill, who once said that. Uh, further backward you can look, uh, the further forward you can see. And this is the reason why we will have this sequence of analysis of the history of diplomacy with the main relevance for the current phase of diplomacy, what we can learn uh, from the history of diplomacy. And there are a few uh, methodological points. Uh, now we'll see if Parvin will be, will be on. I may be able to, oh yes, I can do it. Oh, I'm sorry, I was waiting for Arvin. Well, uh, you, you can see the second slide, which basically shows this transition from uh, the image of the calendar to the more or less environment, at least in my office, in which we operate today. Therefore, visually, we will anchor our discussion over the next 12 months in this tra transition. From the first, we can call diplomats, our past predecessors, to our current, current uh, situation. Now, I already indicated this uh, quote or tweet of the, our presentation. There will be uh, three important methodological uh, elements in our exercise. First, we will try to analyze interplay between continuity and change. Continuity in the core function of diplomacy. It means the function of a peaceful solution of conflict, negotiation, engagement, reaching compromise, and change in the way how it is done from our PAP predecessors to our e-diplomacy exercise. Also another horizontal uh, line in our uh, uh, discussions will be relevance of information and communication. Those are, as you know, from your experience, two pillars of diplomacy. The way how we manage information, the, manage, the way how we gather information. And you will see, for example, next month in discussion on Amarna diplomacy, that one of the first functions of diplomatic services was to create archives. The first uh, embassy uh, in, uh, in Milan in the Renaissance in the 15th century was built around the archives. And the first ministry by Richelieu in France was also built around the diplomatic archives. The second part is communication, the way how we engage, how we communicate uh, with each other. And I would like to highlight with the red on this point an interesting commonality between diplomacy and internet era. For both diplomacy and the internet era, two underlying uh, pillars are information and communication. Keep it in mind uh, throughout our, our, our exercise. Now, we will, uh, at the third, therefore, the first is continuity and change, information, communication, and third methodological element is uh, uh, framing the impact of technology and diplomacy through three lenses. First, how technology change environment for diplomatic activities, practically speaking, how some countries or regions became more important with technology, for example, how railway changed the relevance of diplomacy, or more recently, how the center of American industry shifted from Detroit, the center of the car industry, to Silicon Valley. Therefore, those changes on environment redistribution of economic power, importance of sovereignty, interdependence, is, it will be covered in the first part of the methodology. The second is the new topics on diplomatic agendas. Every new technology introduces a new topics on diplomatic agendas. Telegraph, railway, radio, TV, and the internet. Uh, Telegraph, the International Telecommunication Union was established in the 19th century as one of the first international organizations to regulate relations between countries when it comes to telegraph communication. Therefore, here we will discuss uh, that evolution, how the new topics emerge on diplomatic agendas, and obviously we'll focus 
to our era and question of governance of the internet and the question of uh, privacy protection and uh, other issues. The third element, which is usually framed as e-diplomacy, is emergence of new tools. Here we will discuss Twitter diplomacy, historically speaking, uh, with the emergence of Telegraph and other tools. Uh, also, uh, various tools for managing of information uh, in, in diplomacy. These will be the three main pillars for our, our discussion. Before we start, it is important, uh, and I'm quite happy that we have quite a few participants from Rome. Uh, you experience history every day, and I'm sure you are more fine-tuned to the to the careful uh, reception of history than, than we who are living in relatively new cities as Geneva is. The first uh, caveat is that history of technology is not sequential. And uh, usually in simplified views, uh, they say, okay, we had a telegraph, then we have a radio, then we have TV, uh, telephone, et cetera, et cetera. We have today, except telegraph, more or less all technology used from the traditional post, one of the first technologies, not smoke signals, to uh, radio, internet, somewhere even, uh, even fax machines. Therefore, that interplay between technology and uh, uh, society is quite complex, and it is not a straight line. There is a lot of naivety if we think that the technology just progressed uh, easily. The way how we adopt technology, and the way how we uh, change our lives in the view of technology is very complex and it's very difficult to predict. That one should be keep that caveat in mind and avoid naivety, which sometimes exists, especially when we discuss the impact of the internet on modern society. Another important aspect, and I'm sure you as a diplomat and, and the practicing uh, professionals are aware of the risk of the false analogies, especially when it comes to historical analogies. Uh, we as a human have to find a shortcut to manage complexity of our reality. And the first, usually the first resource where we are looking for an um, easy solution is history and make historical analogies. As you can see uh, with this iceberg, uh, I try to visualize the risk of uh, seeing only the tip of the iceberg, which is very often the case in many historical analogies. Therefore, throughout the exercise, we'll be careful with the analogies. We'll try to use them, but with the, with the necessary, necessary, necessary care. Now, this is the, so far we discussed some sort of way how we're going to discuss and approach the evolution of diplomacy from the uh, prehistory, which we'll discuss today, through the uh, ancient uh, ancient Rome up to the up to the internet, by all all uh, all different phases which which are illustrated on the on the calendar. Now the ultimate uh, the all uh, the key questions is when did diplomacy start? Which is one thing is extremely important to keep in mind. The term diplomacy was invented in the 18th century. It is relatively new. As you know, etymologically, it, is, uh, it, is, uh, um, it comes from the uh, uh, Greek, ancient Greek, and it means, the, it means the paper folded in two. But diplomacy wasn't used, for example, or it was practiced in 15th, 14th, 13th century. It came, it was, it was, uh, the term was associated with negotiation, representation, and other core functions of diplomacy. Only, only in the 18th century. Therefore, we use the term diplomacy uh, now to describe uh, what we understand as diplomacy, although it wasn't used in ancient Rome or ancient Greece. Now, uh, the question when did diplomacy start is an interesting question. There are some anecdotal quotes, um, as uh, Professor Langhorn once said, that it started when our far predecessors realized that it was better to uh, uh, hear the message and the, to uh, to hear the message uh, message and to eat the messenger. Somebody somebody is making noise outside, and uh, that was uh, some sort of anecdotal uh, uh, start of diplomacy, which we described here in uh, in bit extended uh, small cartoon built around our uh, January drawing, uh, where uh, as you can see, um, our uh, illustrator thought that it was uh, there were some. Cannibal, cannibalistic uh, motivations and Germanic motivation of our far predecessor, which is not confirmed historically. But essentially, the moment was that uh, they realized it was better to negotiate, and there was something to gain from the from the from the negotiation. Now, more uh, uh, precisely, based on uh, various studies, archaeological mainly, 
uh, then uh, especially in, in Australia and Polynesian islands, which preserve quite a bit of a prehistorical uh, um, data and archaeological data, uh, one can uh, place the emergence of diplomacy probably to two key developments, emergence of the spoken language, and here is an interesting parallel. We can see the question of a spoken language as vital today as it was at that time, and uh, emergence of tools, I'm sorry, emergence of tools, well, uh, this is a bit of a PR, you can see Swiss military night, Diplo is uh, sponsored by Switzerland, although it was it is not a paid uh, paid uh, advertising. There were these two developments: emergence of language, emergence of tools. Uh, probably were the turning points when our predecessors uh, engaged uh, more uh, uh, in more organized ways with with, uh, with each other and uh, try to solve the conflict in peaceful way through the negotiation. Now, when we think. Uh, um, of the main motivation uh, of the prehistoric man, and uh, uh, one interesting parallel again from the calendar in the prepared for 2004 is that uh, um, we can see if we zoom out and make the abstract historical analogies, quite a few analogies uh, with our time. Uh, when it comes to information, you can see science for me measurement, learning, uh, some sort of time management without. Uh, without the professional Swiss watches. I, I'm not going to show them. Uh, but um, time management related to day and night on the, and the seasons of the year, and some sort of accumulation of the wealth. Uh, initially, it was, it was probably more related to agricultural products than to real, real money. But that question of motivation is important. And here we have continuity and more or less unstopped uh, line till, till our, our era. Now. Uh, uh, Arvin, uh, what I would like to anchor the start of diplomacy is in uh, three core building blocks of diplomacy. It is empathy, it's question of reciprocity, and uh, compromise as a way of solving problems. And uh, Arvin will, uh, will uh, show us the second video. Arvin, please. You could think about, again, how empathy evolved throughout the history, uh, how reciprocity evolved while we are waiting for Arvin, and how the compromise as a core concept is perceived today and how it was perceived uh, in the past. While we are waiting for Arvin, okay, now we can, we can see. video from the Yorkish Primary Center where they train chimpanzees to cooperate. So this is a...
problem with elephants is that you cannot make an apparatus that is too heavy for a single elephant. Okay. Now, now well, you can uh, probably make it, but it's going to be a, a pretty clumsy well, apparatus. Is, uh, so what we did in their the case, is we do these studies in Thailand with Josh Plotnick, is we have an apparatus around of which there's a rope, a single rope. And if you pull on this side of the rope, the rope disappears on the other side. So two elephants need to pick it up. at the Okay, great. Fine. The person uh, who delivered this presentation is uh, Franz De Waal. He wrote uh, an excellent book, which I uh, recommend. I will send you the link in follow-up to our discussion, The Age of Empathy, Nature's Lessons for a Kinder Society. Uh, as you can see from this video, and we will play another video, he argues that some uh, elements uh, of the uh, modern society, like empathy, uh, cooperation, as you can see, the reciprocity are as old as the nature. And uh, our arguments, or uh, sometimes uh, chrono-narcissism or arrogance of uh, our time that uh, it came with a technological development are seriously questioned. And the research from the Deval and the other uh, primatologists is uh, showing that we will have to revisit some of the postulates of uh, modern uh, social sciences and philosophy and place discussion not only on diplomacy, we are now focusing on diplomacy, which is uh, uh, quite important for us, but generally on society, on the, on the way what motivates us, what motivates uh, aggression in, uh, in a modern society, and uh, how embedded are empathy and uh, readiness for cooperation uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in the society itself. Therefore, that, that's the first, first element, as, and, and as uh, all the experiments are showing, uh, we have a quite a strong natural predisposition, both for, uh, for, for empathy, cooperation, engagement, and aggression. And we will discuss in the, after the end of the uh, presentation that element and uh, parallel between, uh, in this case, even natural world, not, not, not even a prehistoric pre pre man, and uh, modern, uh, uh, modern time. How those uh, pillars of diplomacy empathy, reciprocity, and compromise have evolved. Uh, we, will, we will basically also revisit the question of compromise, perception of compromise, and I would like you to put on some sort of your alert on your cognitive mental radar, call it whatever way you want, the perception of compromise in modern society, how the world is used, uh, my computer is compromised. It's increasingly used in negative way, and modern society perceive it in negative way as weakness. This question of empathy, reciprocity, and our natural predisposition to be kind, uh, to engage with others, is an extremely important foundation of uh, diplomacy. And I would place the start of diplomacy, although we cannot um, indicate the year, to the point where uh, humans manage in organized ways to uh, exercise their, their uh, natural predispositions towards empathy, reciprocity, and confidence. Now, Arvin, could you play uh, another, uh, the last video before uh, we conclude the presentation? The last video, as you will see, is on a, a question of reciprocity and fairness. And it is, again, uh, the experiment by the same scientist, Franz De Waal. I suggest that you watch. So what we did is we of. put two capuchin monkeys.
I hope that you had a chance to follow the video. We'll send you the links, but basically uh, the experiment was with uh, two uh, monkeys uh, receiving for the same action two the different, uh, one receiving the cucumber and the other receiving the grape. The one receiving cucumber, obviously he received uh, he received the less attractive food, uh, uh, protested against that. Therefore, we can see that even even uh, in uh, in uh, in, uh, in uh, with, the, with the monkeys, there is a question of reciprocity, fairness, and uh, and the proper treatment. Now you will see in the rest of the video, the author, the Franz De Waal, got a funny a very funny comments from philosophers arguing that fairness and reciprocity was introduced. Uh, by the French Revolution and uh, how it could uh, he try to prove that it started so early with the, with the monkey. Now, uh, I probably choose the most radical way to introduce our discussion on diplomacy, and uh, but it is important uh, to zoom out and to see how long history and evolution of diplomacy is, first of all, therefore it started some elements even before the uh, hu uh, um, uh, human society was established. Second, to see that there is a strong continuity. Elements which we saw in this experiment with monkeys, especially reciprocity, uh, returning favors, fairness, are as important today as they were um, um, a few centuries ago. Now, what I would like to uh, uh, put forward are a few questions. And one question is about the view, which is predominant in our society, that with a more advanced society and more technology, we are basically uh, developing also more harmonious relations in modern society with less friction, with less aggression, more diplomacy in inverted commas. Now I'm using diplomacy in broader sense, not only the uh, um, way of managing interstate relations, but way of solving the conflict. So the question is, is really more peaceful society directly linked to advancement of the technology and our insights in the science and the way how our society functions. What is that interplay? Can we expect that technology can lead towards more aggressive society or less aggressive society? This is the first question that I would like to, uh, to, to pose and to invite you to reflect. The second question is the relevance of all of these developments related to empathy, reciprocity and compromise to e-diplomacy and to our time. Do you see more empathy in the e-diplomacy, in blogosphere, in social networks? Do you see some sort of reciprocity? I know, I noticed one element, and you just open the bracket of reciprocity. When I receive, when I send email to somebody, and he, uh, I don't receive uh, uh, my reply to that person, is related to his reply. If somebody replies after three or four weeks, I usually subconsciously take the uh, luxury to uh, reply also in three or four weeks. Not, not necessarily intentionally trying to calculate, but that question of uh, reciprocity is uh, deeply embedded in uh, the way how we perceive, uh, perceive society. The third element, compromise, is also uh, uh, important. And there is a question, are we more prone towards compromise solution in uh, our e uh, modern time than we were throughout the, throughout the history. Therefore, those are two questions. Uh, obviously, you are more than welcome to pose other questions and comments on my uh, presentation, but I'm suggesting that uh, we can uh, discuss around these two questions, technology and more peaceful society, first question, and second one, reciprocity, empathy, and compromise in e-diplomacy. I pass the floor to you. I will be participating in the chat and maybe commenting commenting uh, uh, by using the, the camera. Oh. I can see that some of you couldn't access YouTube due to a restriction imposed by the ministry. Therefore, you, you, you probably missed quite uh, entertaining uh, um, uh, videos on the experiments with the chimpanzee. I'm just now, I'm sorry for those who, who followed, but I will uh, repeat. Uh, the, the experiment with chimpanzees is showing that uh, empathy, reciprocity, and uh, some sort of uh, um, uh, uh, compromise or solving conflicts through compromise existed even, even before uh, uh, humans. 
uh, what that was the point, and but I will send you the link in the follow up in Chanso, and you can then access from uh, from your home. But we'll keep in mind for the next uh, webinar that you cannot access uh, uh, YouTube from uh, from the ministry. It's a pretty it's useful resource for diplomats. Now it seems that most of you, uh, what Vincenzo uh, indicated, applies uh, to all of our colleagues who were accessing the the webinar from the uh, Farnesina. Is it correct? Okay. Thank you, thank you, Alice. I'm I'm uh, seeing that we had a major disconnect in this this respect uh, because uh, the video illustrated the main points of my discussion. But I suggest when you go home uh, this evening, have a look at the Deval's video. It takes 18 minutes. It is a TED talk, and uh, it uh, it will be useful that you will put in the context what I was mentioning and. Uh, and discussing uh, uh, after after you see you see this uh, this video. I suggest that you yeah definitely Stefano. I suggest that you now now. Um, uh, Ask the questions with the, without the privilege of, of uh, seeing this 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 videos, but uh, I hope uh, the main message message that uh, uh, was was conveyed, uh, and you will see the illustration that we are basically placing the start of the diplomacy to the uh, organized way of uh, of uh, utilizing our natural predisposition towards empathy, reciprocity, and the compromise. Take some water. And here is the basically this transition from the from the image of January calendar till till today. In between, we'll have next uh, eleven or uh, eleven months covering all phases of the evolution of diplomacy through to that um, through that sequence. Well, uh, Matthias, it's a good good question. Uh, violence is not; uh, uh, it doesn't have to be physical violence to be considered. And cyber war and cyber vi violence is uh, it, it has element of uh, of the violence indirectly and directly. As I indicated, it doesn't need to be physical to be violence. But very often we have physical consequences of the of the cyber war, cyber attacks, like disruption of electricity supply like uh, disruption of the critical infrastructure in society and various uh, various uh, segments of the modern society which are run basically through the um, um, internet or IT infrastructures. Therefore, yes, the answer is yes, uh, it could be considered as a form of violence. We will see throughout the next exercise there is a big debate about cyber war. Uh, what is the nature of cyber war? Can we apply Geneva Conventions in cyber war? Can uh, countries use the self-protection as a cyber war? Close to 80 countries, I'm sure Italy is among them, Switzerland is, uh, have some sort of cyber war department in their ministries of defense. So it has become uh, part of the, let's say, violence control parts of the government or ministries in charge of force or violence. It's coming in a moment.
I'm sure that you're following in the media the coverage of questions of cyber violence, cyber crime, cyber war is becoming quite quite uh, popular. And uh, my bet is that uh, at, in 10 years' time, 50% of the time of diplomats, uh, and since, since some of you are uh, junior diplomats, will be will be dedicated to internet-related issues. Um, it is a question on cyber war, disarmament privacy protection, intellectual protection of intellectual property rights. With the shift of our uh, daily routine and our daily reality to the internet, with that shift, we will have more and more diplomacy dealing with various aspects of the development of the internet and the impact of modern society. Therefore, this is one bet which I'm putting that if we meet in uh, two, uh, two, uh, 2023, somewhere in Roma, I hope I will get a dinner or at least drink uh, if 50% of you will be working in some departments or activities related to impact of the internet on society. Uh, while I'm waiting for the good. While waiting, let me ask a question: How is the weather today in Rome? It's quite cloudy here in Geneva and grey. I hope you have nicer weather in Rome. And what else? We have Belgrade. Uh, we have participants from uh, also United States, Venezuela, and yes, Liz from from uh, from uh, from London. Oh, almost sun shining. It's quite diplomatic answer, Elena. Uh, yes, we have a question from Liz uh, Galvez, uh, the our lecture in public diplomacy. Uh, we'll look at phenomenon of trolling because there is no sense of personal responsibility for what one does online. You don't see consequences the same way as in face-to-face -face iteration. Likewise, people become inured to images they see online as violence, feminine, as so may feel less compelled to intervene or for their governments to intervene. Well, that's uh, that's definitely the, the one of the core issues, uh, Liz, that sort of we get intermedi intermediary layers in our perception of reality. And it is going definitely to make a deep impact of human society. And it will require the answer from philosophy and, uh, and uh, sociology but uh, this element of uh, de-empathizing, and this is the reason why the Franz de Waal and others wrote a book, a book on, the, on the need for empathy, is going to be the key. And what we have to keep in mind, empathy is directly related to diplomacy as a personal tool in dealing with other people and the other nations, but also as a general consideration for society. The more empathy we have in society, the more society will be prone towards uh, towards compromise. Thank you, Liz, for this question. We'll reflect on it in the follow-up. Snow in Belgrade, Vladimir. Well, uh, we heard from Elena, almost sunshine in Rome. Uh, question from Liz, uh, then David, uh, how the concept of reciprocity evolved due to the emergence of the internet and social media? Uh, Elisabetta, uh, Fabio, and uh, Federico. Well, um, what do you think? When you engage with somebody on a Skype, uh, Twitter, uh, blog, do you feel some sort of obligation of reciprocity is based on empathy, but also some sort of obligation that you have to contribute or to engage or to, to um, do, do, do something? Have you felt the reciprocity element? It's interesting during the presentation that when you have presenter, in this case myself, presenting and then uh, there is open space for questions. Now, sometimes people 
give a questions, uh, ask questions for the sake of the of the reciprocity because you feel somebody speaking for half an hour and you feel like you have to give him a question because question is usually currency in the in the teaching exercise. Therefore, uh, this is a very interesting ex uh, question, uh, question: How reciprocity will in involve in the in the social media? I'm uh, for time being it's early days of social media. I see it as some sort of a low reciprocity phase where we, we can expect uh, a humanity adjusting to these new tools and putting reciprocity, which is our natural natural instinct, into the social media as well. Therefore, we can expect, like with empathy, adjustment of society to this new media. In what way and how it remains to be seen. From Nicolo, if I may ask you a provocative, do you think for the time being diplomacy is still afraid of social media? Well, Nicolo, it is, um, um, well, I would say it, it depends. In general, yes. Uh, but uh, if you're in Farnesina, because of the, of the, interest of your minister, uh, it is not the case. In some, man, some other ministries, yes, it is. You're in London in the in British and the foreign Commonwealth office, social media is, uh, is, used, is used a lot. But there are some infrastructure, I would say, limitations. One is that social media uh, uh, increases transparency, which may where, uh, where diplomacy as a profession that, that requires some sort of discretion may face the limits. And I usually try to say diplomacy prepare translucency. Therefore, there is, you see that something is going on like in these shower cabins instead of transparency. There is also risk management. Therefore, there are some elements of diplomacy which are not necessarily related to um, um, conservative nature of diplomatic profession, as it is sometimes naively criticized. They're more related to the deep uh, uh, construction of diplomacy as profession. That I would look definitely beyond the, the usual criticism, which goes along the lines, diplomats are conservative, they don't want to change. What is under the water? And what is the real limitation how far diplomacy can engage with social media? Uh, Mary Murphy from Budapest, there was, or Ireland, there was a case in Ireland in December where suicide of a government minister is being partly attributed to anonymous public comments on social media, the policies he had put forward, dealing with online confrontation is a new issue, definitely. That, that, that's the famous case, and we have uh, quite a few uh, problems uh, recently uh, identified, for example, in Australia, increasing number of suicide due to the online mobbing among the teenagers. This is the new reality. We have a new tool. We have to adjust to ways and means how to use this new tool. And probably our professional time and our professional period over the next, for some 30 or 40 years, will be uh, marked to the large extent by the way, by the ways and means how we will adjust to this new medium. We will live in this transition period, how to deal with empathy, reciprocity, mobbing, as Mary indicated uh, in her, her message. I hope that's, that's one, one of the messages that I would like to convey from this session, that you try to open, uh, open uh, um, um, your um, cognitive and then other radars, emotional radars, to this, this transition when it comes to you as a citizen, and when it comes to you as a professional diplomat. David, you're welcome. Uh, David, Elizabeth, uh, Federico, Fabio. Are you together sitting uh, in the same room? Question for David, Federico, Fabio, and Elizabeth. Oh, okay. Okay, then we have a small hub in, in, uh, in uh, Farnesina following, uh, following the session. But, well, if we don't have any any other question, I would like to thank you for uh, your uh, your attention. To apologize for this problem with the YouTube. In the follow up to the session, you will receive the summary points. You will receive the link to the YouTube, and I invite you to uh, engage in discussion around around these these issues. And I also uh, invite you to to start discussing it with your colleagues because uh, yes, we discussed prehistory, but as you can see. Some of the issues from the uh, from the prehistory are as uh, relevant today as they were uh, 
hundreds of thousands of years ago. Great, great, David. Um, I can tell you this is uh, this is the sort of situation, especially when it's access to YouTube and Facebook in many ministries, and many ministries are trying to make a balancing act between um, between uh, relevance of it for uh, for uh, for professional work and some risk that uh, it carries uh, uh, along. Well, all the best. Have a nice uh, afternoon. Enjoy cappuccino in in Rome. Um, um, next time when I'm uh, in Rome, uh, Vincenzo, David, uh, Federico, Fabio, and other colleagues, uh, I will need some advice where to go for the best cappuccino or at least espresso. Uh, for other colleagues in uh, Belgrade, Budapest, United States, all the best. Uh, and uh, we will see each other in uh, February. In the meantime, keep in touch and um, try to reflect on issues that we discussed today. All the best. Bye. Okay, David. See you. Okay, we have another hub with Alice Angela. Thanks.